I've been using macOS for just over one year now and I've realized that there are many little tweaks and changes that I can make to turn this overpriced laptop into a machine that feels more unique to me and at home. So the first thing that I like to customize is my mouse pointer. If I go to spotlight search and type in display, I will immediately be taken into accessibility settings. Here I can make my pointer larger or smaller. I prefer to keep the size small because then it makes all the other things look bigger in comparison. Now one thing that you might be tempted to do is to disable this setting over here, but I highly advise not to do that. You see, when this is enabled and I move my mouse a little quicker, it turns bigger, which essentially is just a cool fidget toy that you can do to avoid work. Now for the colors, I've experimented with many pointer colors before and I found that using black and white or white and black works best. The only issue with using this inverted white is that it's kind of hard to see on a dark background. For example, if I open YouTube, you'll notice that the edges of my cursor sort of disappear. That's why I just like using the default one instead of this inverted one. However, it depends on the mood. Now, the next most important thing that you see when you look at your screen is obviously the wallpaper, not the thing that you're working on. And there are three websites that I can recommend for getting beautiful and amazing wallpapers. But before we get to that, have you ever heard about this? This is the app cleaner and uninstaller from Nectoni, who are sponsoring this segment of the video. This handy software can delete apps on your Mac without allowing them to keep their service files. But most importantly, it frees up your disk space by removing all the unnecessary junk that most apps leave behind when you uninstall them manually. And Apple is not very generous with its storage options, so this tool can be a Lifesaver. Check out App Cleaner and Uninstaller by clicking the link in the description. Now, there are three websites that I can recommend for getting beautiful and amazing wallpaper. Number one is Reddit. So if I go to Reddit and then look up wallpapers, you'll notice a lot of subreddits that post wallpapers. What's pretty cool is that you can sort these wallpapers, for example, best this month or best of all time. Ooh, SpongeBob. Now the next website is called Wallhaven and I've been using it for many years to find cool wallpapers. It usually has more digital wallpapers, but I really like it because a lot of them are minimalist. You can click over here at the top that says topless and you'll be able to find cool wallpapers that are currently trending, just like with Reddit. Now the next wallpaper website is actually two websites. It's Pexels and Unsplash. The reason that I put them both in the same category is because they're both stock photo websites. You can type in wallpaper here and it'll spit out a lot of beautiful stock photos that you can use as wallpapers. Also, shameless plug, if you like this wallpaper, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Now, the next thing that you might want to try is changing up the app and highlight colors. For example, if I go to notes, you'll notice that if I highlight something, the color is yellow. And within macOS, each app has its own color theme, but you can change that. If I open Spotlight again and say Appearance, it will take me into the Appearance settings and here in the Accent color, I can change the default color for all apps. So if I select Blue, you'll notice that now the stuff that I highlight in Notes is blue. Also, all the folders turned from yellow to blue. However, the highlight color and the folder color is actually two different things and you can change them separately. So here, if I change the highlight color to be orange, it's now orange and this is blue. This will affect every single app in macOS. So if I go to Chrome and highlight the URL bar, you'll notice that it's blue. If I change the color now to this pink, URL bar is pink. Pretty cool. Another interesting phenomenon on macOS is that if you have a bunch of folders, you can right click and choose show view options. Here you can change boring things like the icon size or grid spacing, but a setting that's quite interesting is this here, label position. If I choose right, all of the files will display their information on the right side, which is an interesting aesthetic. I also like to show item info, which basically shows photo resolutions if you have a picture file, and an icon preview because I'm not a psychopath. Of course, this customization isn't really that useful, but what is useful is the next one, because it takes place in your browser. I've already made a video about how to customize Chrome, which I'll link to in the description, 
but if you use Safari, look at how clean my main page of Safari is. To do that, go down here and unselect all of this garbage here. Also, you can customize the top bar by right-clicking and choosing Customize Toolbar. Here you can drag things into it, or what's even better, remove things from here. Boop. It also has a satisfying animation and sound effect when you remove something, which makes me customize this toolbar a lot more frequently than I should. Of course, within Safari, you can customize settings for each website. For example, if I click on Safari and then settings for YouTube, I can change the default page zoom, tell YouTube to never autoplay videos, and so on. Now, another big thing, or a small thing, depending on its size, is the dock. For now, I'm experimenting with keeping my dock on the left side of the screen and I have it hidden with zero animation delay. If you want to remove the dock's animation delay, use this terminal command and if you want to reset it back to default, this command. I promise these will not install Linux on your Mac. <clears throat> of course, you can make the dock larger or smaller by dragging on this line here and I prefer it to be medium large like this. If we open Spotlight again and search for dock, here you'll be able to change some more settings of the dock like the magnification, so how much it does this. And this is one of those fidget settings that I have to keep off in order to stop doing this all day. But at the top of every dock, there's this Finder app, which is kind of useful sometimes. So what I like to do inside of it is enable the path bar and the status bar down here by going to view, show path bar and status bar. It's just a better experience that way. You can obviously customize what's on the left here by clicking command comma to open preferences and then in the sidebar just select what you want to show. As for the top bar here, I can again just like in Safari right click and choose customize toolbar and drag stuff in here that I want and drag stuff out that I don't want. I basically only keep two things here, the search bar and these view options because I frequently toggle between the icon view and this column view, which I found to be very useful sometimes. Now, of course, these are just inside customizations, but what about the outside of your Mac? I use this dbrand skin from Ali Abdal because I'm a huge fanboy and it makes my Mac look very nice. Now there are a few more actually useful things that I have modified here and the first one being the trackpad speed. I have set it to this amount here because the default one is just so slow. Another thing that I've done is actually remove the caps lock from my Mac because no one actually uses caps lock. That's what shift is for. So I use this utility or two utilities called carabiner elements and carabiner event viewer. I have no idea what they do but I do know that they let me turn my caps lock into a backwards slash. As you can see, whenever I type caps lock, it's the backwards slash. You might think that this is a completely useless change. However, it's pretty useful in Premiere Pro. I have a video timeline here and I have remapped the backwards slash to do this. See, much more useful than caps lock. Now, while all of these customizations are pretty cool and they can turn your MacBook into a prettier MacBook, but the best way to actually customize your Mac the way you want it to be is with custom apps. Just look at how many of these I have running right now. It's pretty crazy. They allow me to do things like snap windows, do quick calculations, see my clipboard history and more. So I leave you with this where I've compiled all the best utilities and apps for your MacBook. See you later.